Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's topic is going to be for my home sellers. This year is going to be a hot, hot market 2024. If you were not aware, rates are down. Rates are down. Yes, in 2023, we hit 8%, y'all, 8%. I could not believe it. That was the highest our interest rates have been in over 20 years. So it really deterred a lot of buyers to buy in 2023. But now at the jumpstart of 2024, we are at 6.5% percent and it is right now predicted to lower again in spring of 2024. So today's video is going to be for my sellers. We had a lot of buyers in 2020 and 2021 that jumps into homes and now they are having buyer's remorse and now they want to sell. So for those people who are thinking about selling their home, definitely go ahead and keep watching this video. And by the way, if you are new and this is your first time on my channel, I am Yolanda Hayes. I am a realtor in North Carolina. I primarily serve the Winston-Salem market as well as all the surrounding cities in Charlotte. So let's go ahead and jump into this video. So when you decide that you want to go ahead and put your home on the market, it's kind of like you have to start viewing this home as someone else's home. I completely understand. You are attached to the home. You have a lot of memories in this home, especially if you raised your children in this home. But now you have to go ahead and detach yourself from this house because you want to prepare it as if this is going to be someone else's home. So you have to kind of start viewing the home in the buyer's eyes. So the first few tips that I have for you guys today is number one, making sure that you want your house to stand out. In Winston-Salem and other markets as well, but specifically for Winston-Salem, we are currently still in a seller's market. We currently still have low inventory. There's way more buyers than there are homes available. So how are you gonna make your house stand out when this market shifts? Because it's coming. Really after March, it's coming. So right now, this is February 1st, and this is a time that you wanna go ahead and start preparing your home to hit the market at least at the end of March going into April. The first thing that you want to do is view your home as, again, someone else is coming in. The green walls, the pink walls, the yellow walls, guys, the purple, <laughs> I have seen all the colors. That is more of a personalized color. Those are uh, personalized colors. And what you want to do is bring in neutral colors. Because you like pink, that doesn't mean everyone is going to like pink. So you wanna go ahead and make it neutralized to anybody, to make it pleasing for anybody who comes into your home to like it. And they feel like they don't have to spend money coming in when they first come in your house. They don't wanna have to spend money. So this is definitely something that you wanna change out and making sure you make the entire house a neutral color. It's very important to have a realtor by your side. And the reason that is, is because we, as far as real estate agents, we are not um, attached to your home. So having a realtor by your side to look at the home through a buyer standpoint, because we work with buyers and sellers. So I know for myself, walking into a home, I know quickly what a buyer is going to have an issue with. So again, with the paint colors, we hear this all the time of they don't want to come in having to spend money. But the next thing that they don't want to do is pay for carpet. A lot of people tend to not take care of their carpet, allowing people to wear their shoes, spilling drinks on the carpet, and then you have all these stains or the carpet hasn't been stretched out um, or anything like that. So when, some, when a buyer walks in the home, they are, yes, looking at the home as if they are imagining their home, imagining their family in it, but they're also thinking about how much it's going to cost to get it up to date or get it to where they need it to be in order to um, move in. So you have to think, the buyer is coming up with a down payment, they're paying closing costs, they're paying a lot of things, they're paying moving expenses and things like that. 
They don't wanna come into your home and have to spend another 10 to $20,000 to you know, paint, get new carpets, fix repairs, and things like that. So it's always best to have a realtor on standby. Make sure you go ahead and hire your realtor because that realtor is gonna go in and really let you know what needs to be fixed and what needs to be updated in order to get the best bang for your buck. The next thing that I wanna talk about is just making sure that you declutter. When I walk into someone's home and I see a whole bunch of furniture, like way more furniture than what they need, way more, um, it's just clutter everywhere, just clothes is everywhere, trash is everywhere. You have um, a lot, like I said, a lot of furniture, big furniture, furniture that's way too big for the rooms. This is a time that you wanna go ahead and declutter. You wanna go ahead and get a storage unit. Uh, several of my clients had to get storage units um, just to put a lot of their things away. You only really need a couch, a chair, a coffee table. You don't need two couches or two love seats and you know, all these different big large pieces of furniture around. When a buyer is walking into the home, they are looking at the space. And if you have so much furniture that they can't even see the space, this is something that will turn a buyer off. Another tip that I have is depersonalizing. So that's the difference between decluttering and depersonalizing. Walking into your home, again, like I said at the beginning of the video, I know that it's hard to detach yourself and that you feel I'm still living in this house so I still get to keep my photos up. No, when you are trying to sell your home, again, you want to view this as if it is no longer your home. So you do wanna go ahead and remove those personalized photos. I understand that little Johnny has soccer games and you know that first day of school pictures are on the refrigerator and everything but no I recommend that my client remove everything off of their refrigerator and really reduce the minimum or minimize the pictures all over the walls I literally had someone um, that I know personally they did not hire me and that's only because they had another friend that was a realtor that they knew before me but I walked into the house to see what it looked like and I was completely shocked of how many personal pictures were all over this house I mean even their wedding picture it was like the the largest picture in the house it, <laughs> the largest picture in the house as soon as you walked in the front door their foyer had the wedding picture like it was a huge wedding picture and then on the bottom they had a little table that had like four little size pictures of the family I mean if a buyer walked into that house and they immediately are slapped in the face with your family their job when they walk in is to envision their them and their family in the home. Well, they can't do that if your personal pictures are all over the home. So unfortunately, that house did not sell and it you know, got withdrawn off the market. But yeah, it didn't sell. They're still in it today. <laughs> They're still in it today. But that is my point. Buyers are trying to envision their family in the home, but if it's plastered with all of your personalized pictures, um, that's something that you want to think about. You want to go ahead and bring those pictures down. Although this was not in my notes, this is just something that I thought of while I'm recording. You also want to possibly remove anything that's political or anything that is religious. Um, everyone's political views are different and everyone's religious views are different. Um, I have definitely heard walking through homes, my buyers making comments about a specific president, if there is a president up on the wall, um, if it was a religious scripture. For me, I cannot discriminate against who my clients are. When I get a client, I have no idea what their political values are. I have no idea what their religious background is and what they're, you know, what they believe in. That's not my job. My job is to help them find a home. But when they walk into a home and they see something that's against what they believe, they definitely make comments and they definitely walk right out of that house. So if you want to have your home available to any and everyone and you don't want to turn anyone away, this is just something again that I just thought to mention. Just remove all of your religious information or religious um, posters or pictures. And also something else, 
about race. Um, if you want to leave your family pictures up, that's perfectly fine. Of course, they'll know your race by looking at the pictures. But a lot of my buy, uh, sellers, they do remove all of their personalized pictures. No one knows whether they are African American, Caucasian, Hispanic. So some of my sellers just go ahead and remove all of their photos altogether. That's up to you. As myself, I would say to remove all photos, but of course that's up to you. All I'm saying is to minimize them down. And the last tip that I have for you guys is making sure that you clean, clean, clean. Everyone's clean or definition of clean is not the same. So I would say to hire a professional. That is definitely something important when someone says that they have cleaned their home. And I, as a realtor, when I give this information to my client and sometimes, you know, everyone can't afford a house cleaner, but house cleaners literally are, you know, $180 to $200 to clean a whole house. So if you go ahead and budget that in, that's something that can definitely help you because Having a dirty home, that just is a huge turn off to buyers. It's a huge turn off to me when I walk into a home and you know, when they say I'm ready to go ahead and list my house and get it up for sale, you know, I'm, my mind is focused on, okay, do I see dirt? Do I see crumbs on the floor? What do I see? You know, so I'm scanning the home as if I was a buyer because that's just something that is a big pet peeve of mine. I cannot put a house on the market that's nasty. So sometimes I will even go that extra mile. It just depends on who it is um, and what their situation is. I will go that extra mile and pay for a cleaner because I definitely want the house clean and I wanna help my client. If I'm a, working with the seller, I wanna make sure that they have a good transaction and transition into their new life, their new home. If they're relocating to another state, I don't want anything holding them back to keep their house on the market even longer over some cleaning. No, I'll go ahead and pay for it. <laughs> If you are thinking about selling your home in 2024 and you are in my area, Winston-Salem, North Carolina and surrounding areas, please make sure you go ahead and reach out. Give me a call. I do provide free evaluations and free consultations to come out and evaluate your home and make sure I give you a price evaluation as well. So make sure you go ahead, like, comment and subscribe. I am on all social media platforms, which is down in the description box below and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.